This is an interesting question. Where do you see objectivism having influence in subtle and significant ways today in the culture? That's a good question. Because I think to the extent that objectivism has influence, it is in subtle ways and not in explicit ways. Um, so, well, let me say something um, strange, I guess, because of my attitude towards Trump. I think that to the extent that there are people in the Trump administration who are oriented towards deregulation, oriented towards reducing the burden on business and freeing up markets. And I think there are people like that within the administration. I don't think Trump particularly cares, but I think there are people, not at the very senior level, not people like Minutia in the treasury or, or certainly not in the trade team, but in the agencies. I think that attitude and the confidence to do it is, is inspired to a large extent by Ayn Rand and by reading Ayn Rand and, and through her influence. I think that's, um, that is, uh, that is true. Stephen Miller, the economist is a fan of Ayn Rand. If you meet Stephen Miller, the guy at the white house, then he is, maybe he's a fan of Ayn Rand's, but he's no good guy. He's a real bad guy. So I, I, I don't know. So I'd say within the various think tanks, within the free market world, within the Republican world where presidents would pick people and take them and, and put them in the administration in various roles, there is a significant number of people who have been inspired by Ayn Rand and where objectivism has having an influence on them. I think I've said on the show previously that I've been told, now this is a year ago or so, that in the White House, literally in the White House, there are people who listen to the show and who are influenced by, you know, I don't know what that means. I, I believe the source who told me this. So I believe that there are people like that. But so I think, I think we're, we're you know, nobody who can be explicit about it. Nobody who's going to take the ideas all out. Nobody who maybe understands the ideas fully, but inspired. I think that's true too. In the broader free market movement or what some people call the libertarian movement, but in the free market movement, there's very little, you know, the free market movement is to the extent that it's big, to the extent that it's growing, to the extent that it's international, all of that is a consequence of Ayn Rand and, and, and objectivism. Without Ayn Rand, the free market movement would be a lot smaller. Uh, you know, there's, there's a little libertarian book that was published once called It All Begins with Ayn Rand. I think that's absolutely true. I think not only does it begin, but it continues. I, I, I think a lot of, you know, I, I interviewed about a week ago this economist, um, uh, who uh, from from uh, SMU and uh, Lawson and um, you know he said he's kind of a closet objectivist. I don't know. What, I I don't think he is, but the point is that he's inspired by Ayn Rand. He loves Ayn Rand. He's got a post of, of Ayn Rand. He's got the books. He's read the books, and all of these guys have. And and she's inspired them, even though they don't necessarily take the philosophy seriously, or they haven't adopted the philosophy, or accepted the philosophy completely or talk about the philosophy or preach the philosophy, they've internalized it. And I think that many people like that, and I'd say the other place in the culture where that is the case, is in places like Silicon Valley and, and just business. So many CEOs, so many businessmen in finance, in hedge funds industry, in Silicon Valley, in, uh, uh, in all kinds of industries all over the world. They might be religious. They might be even leftist. They might all be all over the place philosophically. But many of them will tell you they would not have reached where they are if not for Ayn Rand's influence, enough for Ayn Rand's, not for reading her books. So, so many of the founders of Silicon Valley were influenced by Ayn Rand. So many of the Fortune 500 CEOs. And I think, I think it's ongoing. I think it's, 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 it's continuous. So, those are the places in business, a little bit in politics, although more superficially, um, and certainly in academia, in particularly among the free market kind of econ economist types that are out there. That's where I think the influence is. Um, but even in philosophy, so in somebody like Greg Sotomayor would be better to comment on this, but um, there's a whole field now called virtue ethics 
which is similar in a sense. To, it is, it's an idea, the Aristotelian idea that we should live a good life and what are the virtues that are necessary to living a good life. In a sense, it's, it's egoistic fundamentally. And it, it, it's a question whether that field would exist if not for Ayn Rand and whether how much Ayn Rand has influenced the people in that field. So it's, and even, I think even a little bit in epistemology and philosophy, people like Alan Godhelf and, and Greg Salamieri had an influence in the thinking of philosophers in those areas. <laughs>
I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourunbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your book show. And, um, and and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to keep this uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next.